What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video talking about fishing swim baits at urban local ponds and lakes. I have a lot of viewers on this channel that fish like the local ponds and honestly since we live here in Phoenix the urban spots that we have in the valley they're pressured. Everybody goes and fishes them and a lot of guys out here, they don't have access to a boat or they're just not in the position to own a boat yet. So they have to beat the banks. And a lot of these urban spots, though we have a decent amount of them, they all still get pressured from just those different communities that live in it. And every single day they get hit with not just swim baits, but you know, all the conventional, then you got like cat fishermen and trout fishermen and all that kind of stuff so they're always constantly being pressured by something whether it is you know the birds that live now on some of these lakes that eat the fish the fishermen and just everything else is just kind of weighing down on those fish so i find that these urban fish are way harder than the lake fish in my opinion just because with the lake fish i feel like they're they're pressured as well but I feel like since it's a much wider body of water, those fish can go into deeper water. They can go to 20 plus feet of water and, you know, be fairly safe and chill and stuff like that. But at the urban spots, I mean, some of these ponds, it seems like you can literally cast across the entire pond. So they're going to be constantly seeing stuff go by and it's just always in their face. So it can be very, very difficult figuring out these especially the Arizona urban fish, but these tips and techniques can definitely help some of you guys that maybe fish in California or in Texas or some of the other places that might have some pressured bodies of water. So if you guys are ready, let's get right into today's video. So I've been fishing, you know, these local urban spots ever since I was a kid. And back then fishing wasn't cool. And so these places weren't pressured as much. You can fish you know, a worm or a jig and you can consistently catch fish like every single time out. And then once we kind of got into throwing those, you know, bigger swim baits, what happened is since those fish never saw those types of baits before, those fish went absolutely insane. I mean, we were throwing the depths 250 and the eight inch HUD and, you know, big baits like that. And we had never seen such a reaction out of fish before. And those fish were fired up and they were, you know, slamming our baits left and right. And it was a really fun time. But the problem with throwing, you know, such massive baits like the Depths 250 is it has a very specific glide to it, right? And it's that hard side, side, side. And once you fish a bait like that for, I don't know, we've probably fished it for like two years or so, something like that those fish catch on because it's just such a small body of water, right? And you're constantly fishing this thing and you catch, you know, quite a few fish. The fish are around it will wisen up and be like, dude, our buddy got caught, abducted by that thing before. Like there's something wrong with that bait. And so slowly but surely after a bit of time, we stopped getting bites on this and we'd get, you know, a few followers here and there. And then after a while of just getting followers, we just never saw fish chasing this thing ever really again. So it's, uh, that's just how it goes. I mean, the pressure is just tripled on such a small body of water and you're fishing it, you know, two to three times a week. It really does hound into those fish's minds are like that thing is fake, especially when you have other guys go in there and throw in the same exact thing. So things kind of switched from, you know, back then you could literally throw the bait out in the middle of the pond and work it and you were catching fish. And it was just absolutely ridiculous. But once those fish kind of wisened up and over the years since fishing has become way more popular, the pressure has gone higher, the bodies of water that I fished, a lot of them back in the day used to have a lot of grass in them like a ton of grass and obviously grass you have the bluegill and the shad that live in it the bass can ambush out of the grass and get you know the shad and bluegill out of it and it just helps those fish catch prey a lot easier but once more people started fishing these ponds what happened is with all that grass 
If you try to go out and just regular fish, you were snagging grass constantly. So what I think happened is just the park ponds, they just got a lot of complaints about like, hey, I'm trying to fish this pond, but there's just so much grass everywhere that, you know, every time I cast, I'm getting five pounds of grass. So I'm gonna assume that with all the complaints and throughout the years, whatever, the park ponds, they started putting chemicals in the water to kind of kill off the grass. That's why some of the times the water is just straight up blue and it's just the chemicals, you know, dying off that grass. Now, a pond that I have fished forever and it's probably, you know, my favorite pond, it's called Chaparral Park. Now, if you guys from Arizona, you probably might know Chaparral or been to it. But for those that aren't, Chaparral is pretty much just a seven acre concrete all the way around pond. So with that pond, it's literally the, the concrete here, concrete just drops maybe a foot and a half and then you have your pond. There is no shallow, gr uh, gradual, you know, incline. There's none of that. It's just concrete drop, foot and a half water right there at your feet. So with that, there's no, you know, points or no, there's like one sandbar, but every now and then I might catch a fish on it, but really there's not a whole lot to it. Now there are rock piles in this pond, you know, man-made rock piles that are scattered around the entire perimeter of the pond. But the problem with that is that the rocks are maybe like 15 feet out. Like you can literally see them. When the water is decently clear, you can see the rock piles. And so it kind of defeats the purpose of like, yeah, like back in the day, there used to be fish that would ambush off those rock piles and we would target them and I would remember you know, by landmark where each, every single rock pile was because they would use it back then. But since fishing got more popular, people would just see the rock piles and they would just start fishing around them and they would start catching them, right? So now those rock piles are kind of useless for a lot of the time. The only time I ever see fish on those rock piles is when they spawn. Other than that, those fish just don't use that rock pile because it's too seen. And those fish, they know what a human is. Anytime there's a bass up shallow and it sees a human, it bolts, it's gone. Cause it knows that we are a danger. If you're sitting around that rock pile and you see a human come by, that fish is gonna see you and it's just gonna be gone. So those rock piles around the pond, they're kind of useless. And so you have these rock piles that are useless, one. Two, you have no grass, useless rock piles, so what are those fish able to do now? Well, it's not much, right? Because there's no real places for those fish to sit in and ambush prey as it goes by. So what those fish have become is they become very pelagic, where they're more out towards the middle of the pond, where they feel the safest, because a lot of people really can't cast that far to those fish. So they're definitely more out towards the middle and they suspend. And suspending fish can be the hardest fish to catch just because they're suspending. They're not really relating to anything. They're always sh following shad or bluegill or trout around the pond. And you kind of just have to line up your cast and hope that there's a fish kind of nearby in the vicinity. So with that, you have to think in your mind, okay, like these fish are suspending out there in the middle of the pond. What can I fish out there to get the reaction? So one of the baits that I like fishing for those suspended fish is a multi-segmented bait. This just so happens to be like a dow swimmer, a triple trout, my buddy C Captain Chris's baits. And what you do is you just fire it out as far out as you possibly can and you burn it on top of the water. And you make this cast like three to eight different times, just kind of in the same spot. And pretty much what you're doing is you're calling those fish up. The first cast, you burn it, you rip it, you're running it through and you bring it back in. What that's supposed to do is it's supposed to kind of alert the bass in the general vicinity they're like, oh, it sounded like something was being chased, like something's going on. You fire back out there and the fish might not move from the spot. Fire back out there, you get that bait going, ripping. Then a fish might come over and be like, okay, there's something going on. Then it kind of goes back over to that spot, you fire out another cast burn, 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 start giving it twitches. And then the fish is like, oh yeah, there's something going on over here. Make another cast out there, burn, burn, burn. The fish sees it that time and it eats your bait. 
I've been fishing that way out there for, you know, years, and it's definitely resulted in a lot more bites that way. And it's a lot of fun when you get them to do that. But it kind of is repetitive because you're kind of casting the same exact spot. But it just kind of calls them to that general area. And when your bait's kind of higher above, like right on the surface or right below it, that's a pin spot for those fish. So in Chaparral, those specific fish, they like eating top water because they get to pin a bait kind of to the surface where there is nowhere else for it, them to pin a bait to. So top water is a great way for those fish to eat and pin bait and trout or bluegill, whatever it is. So getting your bait to look frantic on top of the water, you're gonna get a lot of bites that way. Now, the other way I like to fish top water is kind of parallel with the bank. So with that concrete bank, what I've seen a lot of fish do is they'll sit maybe like right in front of those rock piles. So like 10 feet off from the bank and they're cruising. And sometimes they're able to pin shad and bluegill up along that concrete wall and they'll pin them and they'll eat them from there. And I've seen it a thousand times. It's really cool to see it where if there's like a little bit of shade from that concrete wall, the, the bait fish will sit right in there and the fish will just chase them and they bow right along the, the concrete wall. So what I've been trying to do throughout the years is just parallel the bank, right? And one of my favorite baits to fish parallel on a top water is just a rat bait. For some reason, even though obviously it doesn't imitate a shad or a bluegill or anything like that, the idea is the same exact thing. Those fish are moving along, waiting to pin something up against that wall. So I'll fire out a bait tight to the wall and I'll bring it in. And in some of these urban spots, I've actually seen, you know, very small, you know, mice in the water or scurrying along at night. And sometimes, yeah, they do just how happen to fall into the water. And since it's that, that foot and a half drop, sometimes it's hard for them to crawl out and they're looking for a space. They swim down, bass is there, boom, it crushes it. So I've had tons and tons of success on a rat lure at these specific urban spots and they absolutely get crushed. Another thing that I've also done throughout the years to get a bite is fish a fish a soft bait, more specifically a battle shad, but soft bait. Now you can go with like the six inch citizen or the 7.5 battle shad or just the regular seven inch citizen. But what I do with that is for many, many years, I fished the bottom at Chaparral, fire it out there, let it sink down to the bottom, and I just slowly reel it back. And I rarely, rarely ever got any bites doing that. I just, for some reason, couldn't wrap my mind on the reason why I was not getting bites when I was fishing a bait like that on the bottom. It took many, many years later until I got a little bit smarter and realized like, yo, we've always seen Shad swim kind of in the middle of the water column or up near the surface. They're never really on the bottom. And I've seen a school of bait fish before in that specific pond, and they were rarely ever on the bottom. So I remember a couple years ago, my buddy Matt from SB Fishing, he came into town. We were fishing Chaparral. I was fishing the Battle Shad. I remember the entire time we were there, I was fishing it on the bottom, just kind of working it. And then in my mind, I'm like, yo, I should probably actually bring it up off the bottom, kind of in the middle of the water column, but give it kind of a more natural shad, you know, presentation. Fired it out there, I let it sink for like three seconds, started my retrieve, and I got thumped by like a nice three and a half pound fish with Matt. That was a great fish, and then I'd say probably like six or seven months later, like two, probably like two years ago, year and a half ago, first warm day in February, I was fishing the battle shad, same exact thing. Fired it out there, let it kind of sink down for like three seconds, started working it. I gave it a speed up right before I was about to hit a rock pile and boom, I got smoked right before I was about to hit that rock pile. So it's just these very subtle things that we need to change to in order for us to get bites from these very specific urban spots. And so that's just how I tackle a place like that with really no features. 
you really have to sit down and think about what you're doing, how you're presenting a bait, and when you're doing it. And I think you're gonna get a lot more bites on a pressured body of water like that. Now, it's very specific times when I fish a pond like that. Lately though, the ponds that I have fished, they've had a couple features on them. And features could mean anything from waterfalls, rocks in the water, docks, um, you know, a pipe, anything really that will let that fish sit in a very specific spot to ambush a prey. And I've been fishing ponds like that. There's not a lot, but the ones that I have in my mind, I can kind of go through before I go out in the morning, like, okay, you know, we just had a recent rain, so all of the waterfall spots should be going. And I've got like two of those picked out. Let's go and see if we can catch a fish. Or maybe it's like, all right, it's a certain time of the day. There's going to be shade here. Let's go fish these docks real quick. So you start making kind of a milk run in your mind just throughout the conditions of the day and you fish those. If you have ponds that have features, take advantage of those because features just means you have a very specific spot that you should be able to get a bite from from a bass without having to fish the entire pond and trying to get lucky and just get one out in the middle of the pond. So with our bodies of water out here, there's a few of them that have waterfalls, there's a few of them that have, you know, pipes in the water, a few of them have docks, you know, stuff like that. And so in my mind, I always like to just run through like, okay, let's just go here, let's go there, and let's maybe go here and try that spot out. So fishing those very specific small spots there could be one or there could be two maybe even three good spots on some of these ponds and i fish those three and i'm out where right? i don't want to waste my time because it's like it's either i get bit in these three three specific spots or i'm not going to catch a fish at all throughout the day now my number one most favorite bait when it comes down to these very specific spots that i kind of want to keep my bait in there for as long as I possibly can but have good action is obviously the DRT the tiny clash pretty much middle lip then the V tail and all I do is called the dead walk I've already done a video on how I like to fish the tiny clash I'll leave a link to it up here if you guys want to go watch it so what the tiny clash does for me that a lot of baits can't do for me is that dead walking motion where it goes right here and it stays right there. And I think the Tiny Clash is the perfect size for these little urban spots that I fish. Now I could definitely do the same exact thing for the K9, but the size difference is overwhelming a lot of times. I mean, when I go out to fish an urban spot, I'm not expecting to catch a fish over five pounds. I mean, that's just brutally honest. I know some of these ponds have them, but it's, almost just so rare to even catch a fish like over five pounds out of these spots that my main target size fish is literally from a pound and a half up to maybe four pounds this size bait will get you bites from all those fish now obviously if you really wanted to go out there and try and catch you know those four plusers all the time yeah fish this thing and you'll probably get one bite out of 10 to 20 trips and you're not gonna have a lot of fun when I go down to these urban spots, I just try and have some fun for maybe an hour or two and just get a bite. So that's why I fish the Tiny Clash. You can obviously fish any other bait, but as long as it's a bait that you can kind of keep in the same spot, may it be like a glide bait would be great. Just like a smaller one, maybe a six to like maybe eight inch size glide bait you're gonna do just fine with. But something that you can kind of have complete control over and keep it in that spot so if you pitch it under a tree you don't work it out too fast and the fish don't have a chance to get it if you pitch under that tree you're able to you know walk it walk it walk it walk it and it stays right there gives off a lot of action and the fish eat it it's the same thing with fishing docks i like to pitch out to it walk 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 and you have complete control over it and boom the fish sometimes will just eat it right at my feet so it's it's just the ability to keep that bait kind of in the strike zone as long as I possibly can, as well as it being a really good size for just fishing an urban spot. So th I think the biggest thing is when you go up to a pond for the first time or whatever, 
take a look around if you possibly can of the entire pond and just visibly see like is there anything that a fish could ambush fairly easily at may it be an overhanging tree may it be like a rock pile in the water a waterfall docks just something some type of cover that the fish can sit in or sit around and use it as an ambush spot you're gonna save a lot of time especially if you're fishing some of these more pressured urban spots instead of having to go around and just cast it out in the middle and kind of just dicking around all the time you can just go to these very specific spots fish them and leave you don't really want to be wasting your time because there could be another spot further down the road that might have what you're looking for so i think the biggest thing to kind of take away is sometimes you do need to downsize i mean you guys have seen that i fished the baby bull shad at some of these urban spots and it gets crushed i mean i'll leave a link to one of the videos that i've done smoking those fish on the baby bull shad sometimes you even catch some nice ones doing it as well and then nowadays i'll never really fish a 250 ever again at some of these urban spots i just don't think it's worth my time now i did catch last year uh like a four pounder on the canine at one of the urban spots which for some reason i didn't see coming but i'd caught in you know fairly big fish out of that pond before and i think i was watching some drt videos like the night before and i was like yeah i want to go fish the canine and so went fish the canine kind of the same thing as chaparral it's kind of just a concrete around the entire pond but with the sun angle that it was that concrete had just a bit of shade hanging right off of it so what i was doing is i was just pitching that shade line and I remember I, I went into the shade line, came out, and this four pounder just rolls on it. It was so gnarly. I wish I would have gotten it on film, but there can be very specific times that you can fish, you know, a bait of this size and get a fish at an urban spot, but it's kind of rare. So that's why I always try to downsize. I fish a smaller rat. I fish just this two piece rat by PB Rat. I love this rat. It gets smoked at the urban spots really well. And then obviously, again, I like fishing the Tiny Clash. This thing is killer. And then, as of recently, i actually just been fishing this little guy. Now, this is a kind of new swim bait on the market. This little guy is an Ayumu S-Squad 120. It's really, really small. I mean, even compared to the Tiny Clash, it's fairly small. It's only 120 millimeters, so it's small. But this little thing has a killer action, and I actually really like this bait. Yumu has kind of collab with Roman Mate. If you could tell, the front of this bait has like the head of the Roman Mate Murai. And so it's a cool little bait. I really like it. It's a floater, and I've gotten fish on it when it was a floater, but I also like adding just, I add just a little bit of weight to it it's uh, pretty much like a very very slow sinking bait now so if i make a far cast it will sink just a little bit but when i start the retrieve it's just right below the surface of the water and i fished this bait kind of the same way as that tiny clash where it's in and around those you know ambushing spots but since this thing is a little tiny here those fish just have a better shot at eating it so Instead of like the dead walk with the tiny clash, I really like to just fire this thing out there, reel it and like give it twitches, reel it, twitch, twitch, reel, 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 twitch, twitch, and those fish will come up and smoke it. And even when I do fish around like a dock, what I'll do is I'll pitch it, I'll let it kind of sink down just below and I'm just giving it like hard twitches and it just darts, darts, darts. And sometimes those fish will come out and smoke it that way as well. So yeah, that's pretty much how I go about fishing swim baits at the urban spots. It can be very, very difficult to do it, especially here in Arizona. Uh, I've, I've maybe caught, you know, I don't catch many, but you know, when you do get one, you feel pretty good about your spouse, especially when I go back to Chaparral and I catch a fish out of there. Uh, that's one of the best feelings ever, but that's pretty much the big the breakdown, again, if you guys are fishing kind of those non-pressured ponds, it might be slightly different, obviously, but you could take this advice 
figure out you know very specific spots on your body of water if you're fishing more of a concrete pond think about how those fish like to ambush prey without having that cover and you're going to get a lot more bites if you guys have any other questions let me know with a comment down below other than that thank you guys so much for watching and as always go out there and chase your dreams